Hello, we have a blurb and the cover for the new Warrior Cats book, and that's what I'm here to talk about. Warning, obviously, that this contains spoilers for the end of The Broken Code, which isn't actually out yet, and more obviously spoilers for the upcoming arc. It's kind of unfortunate that because these books come out once every six months, we never really get any mystery as to what's going to happen in the upcoming book. Anyways, the new arc is called A Starless Clan, with the first book being called River. This implies to me that, with the book structure and coincidental number of clans, we'll have a river, thunder, shadow, sky, and star following it in some order. Well, in some order, but probably still ending with star. Anyways, we've got protagonists, all three of which have already been born this time around, and I'm going to go over them in case you're unfamiliar with uh, Zero Personality Warrior Cat's background characters. The oldest is Sunbeam, who was a kit born in Tigerheart Shadow, and she is a Shadow Clan warrior, obviously. She was made a warrior sometime before the Broken Code began, and we never saw her as an apprentice. So, assuming the next book, and whatever gap they're willing to give us between these arcs will take up at least a season, Sunbeam's probably been a warrior of Shadow Clan for at least a year by the time the new arc should be starting up. So not super young, not super old, just a warrior. She's Needletail's sister from Berryheart and Sparrowtail's second litter, but she never got to know or see her sister before she died, so any relation would be a bit abstract to her. And it probably won't be very relevant to the plot if it's even mentioned at all. She's listed as being brown and white in the Allegiances, and her art on the cover looks very, very light brown, uh, or ginger because of the harsh lighting as usual for these covers. This isn't a good reason to assume that she isn't brown, obviously, <laughs> um, but she seems to have a white spot on her chest, which makes her resemble Needletail in patterning, which would be cute if it's intentional, which is doubtful, but we'll see. Anyways, the second oldest is Flamepaw, who is an adult man. <laughs> he was born in Squirrelflight's Hope, and he was made an apprentice in between Lost Stars and the Silent Thaw, only maybe a month or two after the Broken Code main character Rootspring was made one. And I understand that it might be hard for any of the ThunderClan apprentices to be made warriors during the Broken Code, but spoilers, Bramble Star's back. Flamepaw and his fellow apprentices, who by the way, are also adults now, some of them being older than Plainpaw, have had access to their mentors for this entire time. They would know if or not they're ready to become warriors assessment or not. And yeah, warrior assessments are useful and all, but if you've had an apprentice for a few extra months, as is the case with every current ThunderClan apprentice, I'm pretty sure you'd know they were ready. So yeah, all of the apprentices from ThunderClan are over a year old and should have been made warriors months ago, so you'd think upon arriving back, Bramblestar would say, Hey, let's promote some warriors. Uh, no, I guess he just leaves them. <laughs> Anyways, Flamepaw is a pure black cat who almost definitely has orange, or as they say in warrior cats, amber eyes. On the cover, he looks tabby-striped, and... I'm just going to excuse this as a quirk of the artist until the books say otherwise. It's been a long time since we've had a black cat main character at all, and the last one was Tall Shadow, if she even counts. It's cute, and it's a nice change of pace from 7,000 gray cats, uh, speaking of which. The third protagonist is Frostpaw, who we currently know as Frost Kit. She's from RiverClan, making her our first RiverClan protagonist. To be honest, with it having been at least two seasons since Lost Stars, the book where she was born, she should probably be apprenticed about now. I have to stop complaining about this. And by now, I mean basically around the same time Her Darkness Within came out. But I'll, I'll, I'll excuse it for Frostpaw. <laughs> it's not as bad as Flamepaw's situation. So we've got two characters who are kind of lagging behind in what stage of life they're supposed to be at, but I'll excuse it because of what's going on lately, and because Misty Star has, for lack of a better phrase, bees in her brain. From the looks of this cover, she's probably gray, which is pretty disappointing seeing as we've had a solid gray cat protagonist in every set since Omen of the Stars. That said, the harsh lighting on these covers has obscured a character's color before, and the covers aren't a trustworthy source for what color a cat is. Like, this is Violet Shine, who is described in the books as being white with black spotting. I do wonder sometimes how limited the descriptions Harper Collins gives to the artist are. This creature is supposed to be Blue Star. What in the world happened? Her eyes are a mystery too. They appear green, but she's in really, really harsh yellow lighting, so they could actually be blue. But then again, the eye color seems to be something that doesn't change in the lighting in these covers, so who knows. I guess my problem is that I just really don't want them to be green. 
Doubling has green eyes now, Needletail had green eyes, Twig Branch has green eyes, and while blue-eyed gray cats are no novelty in warrior cats either, it would at least be a bit different compared to what we've been dealing with lately. Actually, no, because if we had another blue-eyed <laughs> gray protagonist, it would literally just be canon Bristlefrost. And kind of also canon Spotfur. <laughs> I guess what I'm saying here is that there's just no winning with gray cats right now. <laughs> Anyway, it could be that the harsh lighting on this cover is obscuring her colors a bit, which would be fine by me. We've never had a tortoiseshell point of view character in the main series, or a white one. Uh, white is unlikely though, as we can see a little bit of striping on her leg, but who knows what the cover artist is doing. Look at, look at Flamepaw. She's labeled as a medicine cat apprentice, so Mothwing must have taken her basically immediately. With most of the cats being born in the first series being elders now, Mothwing is probably getting on in years. The setup is pretty close to what we had last arc. Shadowpaw was warrior age because both of his sisters were already warriors, meanwhile Bristlepraw was introduced and became a warrior basically instantly afterwards. That said, not really because she was an older apprentice, but because she was an overachiever, and Rootpaw, meanwhile, had just become a new apprentice. Oh yeah, Rootpaw, I mentioned earlier that Flamepaw's just a little bit younger than him, uh, so f for context, Rootpaw was made a warrior three books ago, and to put into perspective here, Rootspring is a cat in his age group and is knee-deep in romance troubles right now, and Flamepaw's probably still pulling ticks off of Brackenfur. So anyways, characters, two girls and a boy, which is eventful not just because one is from RiverClan, but because it's actually the first time we've had two female characters that aren't sisters as protagonists. Leafpool and Squirrelflight, sisters, Dovewing and Ivypool, sisters, and Violet Shine and Twig Branch are sisters. These guys are not sisters! <laughs> It also does a lot to even out our overall gender ratio when it comes to perspective characters, as long as you don't count Jay and Lion twice, which, to be fair, you probably should. <laughs> and also assuming you're not counting Flametail and Stormfur, which you probably shouldn't. Anyways, on to our blurb, which I will read. A dark age has given way to an era of peace in the five warrior clans, and with it comes the promise of hope. As our leaders deliberate on unprecedented changes to the warrior code. Three young warriors set their paws on paths that will decide their futures. In ThunderClan, warrior apprentice Flamepaw, a descendant of the legendary leader Firestar, struggles under the weight of his famous kin's legacy, while young ShadowClan warrior Sunbeam has doubts of her own. But in RiverClan, medicine apprentice Frostpaw looks eagerly toward the horizon, awaiting the day she will be called upon to help her clan, a day that may dawn sooner than she ever dreamed. I think I left out the word cat in there somewhere, but you know. First of all, this has some implications for the Broken Code arc. That is, that they're going to decide to change the code in the last book. I want this to happen, but at the same time I'm worried about the execution. We all know that Bristlefrost and Rootspring are going to get together, but to what struggle? They both decided a few books ago that they valued their clans more than their relationship. While there's hints of them definitely changing their minds about that, the way that they're going about fixing the code feels rather... placid? Especially after Rootspring and Bristlefrost at worst got yelled at by a Needleclaw, and nothing much else really stood in the way of their relationship so far. This is definitely an arc about codebreakers, and on some level they are definitely code breakers. I mean, they, they haven't done anything, so it's not like they're actually code breakers. And it's not like they got punished with the other code breakers either, because all they did was, you know, mindlessly crush on each other a little bit, or more so in the earlier part of the arc, Root Spring one-sidedly crushing on Bristlefrost. We've had a lot of business about code breakers who was one, how to punish them, but we've been pretty far from that element for about three books now, and Root Spring and Bristlefrost were never at the butt end of it. I guess it's enough to spark a conversation about the warrior code and how it doesn't work, but aside from Root Bristle's mutual pining, it just feels forgotten. To be honest, before this blurb, I was legitimately worried about them forgetting about the codebreaker side plot and just letting it die off without a proper conclusion in the wake of the Dark Forest shenanigans. I'm glad we're actually getting a proper change. Leaders deliberating on code changes doesn't sound 
crazy exciting, but I feel like Warrior Cats is actually due for some political conflict for once instead of repeated attacks from outside forces followed by what seem like giant magnets to status quo. The second half of this blurb isn't quite as telling. Flamepaw struggling under the weight of Firestar's legacy is actually a bit odd, as being related to Firestar is an element he shares with a lot of his clanmates. Most neatly, we have Finchpaw, his sister, who is just as much descendant to Firestar as he is. But secondarily, we have all of Lion Blaze's kits, of which Holly Tuft, Sorrel Stripe, Fernsong, and Spotfur are still alive and in ThunderClan. Sorrel Stripe is on the same level of related to Firestar as Flamepaw is, but I don't think Sorrel Stripe has ever questioned her legacy. But it doesn't just stop there, because Myrtlepaw and Baypaw, the other ThunderClan apprentices, are Sorrel Stripe's kits, making them, while well, one generation down, also directly related to Firestar. Not to mention Fernsong's children, which include the last set's ThunderClan main character, Bristlefrost, alongside her siblings Thriftier and Flipclaw. Oh, also, Spotfur's very pregnant right now. And I don't think Warrior Cats cares much about birth order, but even if they did, Leafpool is Firestar's firstborn, so if this is some sort of inheritance of legacy, that's not it. His mother Sparkpelt is presented in the series as closely resembling Firestar, sharing both his pelts and eye color, but Flamepaw doesn't in either category, seemingly. His tortoiseshell sister is probably closer. This kind of thing almost feels like it carries the implication that Squirrelflight and her biological children are more legitimate quote-unquote heirs in a society that doesn't even have heirs than Leafpool and her biological children. Maybe because hers were cross-clan kits, or maybe because she was a medicine cat, either way it feels odd. I mean, Squirrelflight raised those kids to begin with. No matter what, Lionblaze and his siblings are always direct grandchildren to Firestar, and they knew him when Spark Pelt and Alderheart never got the opportunity. Like, Lionblaze and his children aren't any less Firestar's descendants than Spark Pelt and hers. But putting that aside, setting Flamepaw up like he has a legacy to uphold and big paw steps to fill and implying he might be struggling to do so makes him sound a lot like his uncle, Alderheart. And I really hope that Flamepaw's personality doesn't end up being Alderheart, too. Moving on, all we're told about Sunbeam is that she has doubts. Seemingly, the only thing these doubts can be about are new changes to the Warrior Code, to which I say... Get over it, Sunbeam! You're barely old enough to have known the Warrior Clans in an extended state of normalcy! Frostpaw is a medicine cat that is eager to prove herself, and I do like this approach for a medicine cat, or at least what we can gather from it, as being a bit more confident than our previous two. Actually, more like our previous three, counting Jayfeather. After all, he is kind of reserved and didn't choose to become a medicine cat. It's a bit unfortunate knowing that Willowshine's sudden, kind of instant death in the most recent book was to pave the way for this character. We don't always need a medicine cat protagonist, especially not when the books and the stories seem to be so much more engaging in the absence of StarClan's annoying, largely useless meddling. Willowshine was intuitive about medicine cat business and covered a lot of spiritual areas where Mothwing was weak. Additionally, Mothwing has less trust in StarClan than ever, despite believing in it. Those elements, combined with the fact this arc is called A Starless Clan, lead me to believe two things. The first is that they killed off Willowshine and not Mothwing to cause that spiritual gap. Second, Mothwing might not particularly encourage a connection with Frostpaw's warrior ancestors. Sure, we don't really know which clan the Starless Clan is supposed to be, but based on the evidence we have so far, the only real option is River Clan. It's almost definitely one of the three clans that we have protagonists in, and it's just the most viable. The end of the blurb implies that she will need to be prepared to help her clan earlier than assumed. This could mean a number of things. The new arc's currently unrevealed plot could suddenly pick up. A big battle could cause RiverClan significant injury. Or even Mothwing suddenly dying and her having to assume her full role early. And it also makes it sound like Frostpaw is going to be the only character here who has anything to do given to her by the blurb. Flamepaw, if we're being logical, does not have far to go before he becomes a warrior. He's an adult. Sunbeam, more than an adult. I know what Frostpaw's struggles are going to be. She's a new apprentice, she's learning the herbs, she's growing up. 
we get cats starting as apprentices and growing up every arc, probably on purpose, as they intend for the new generation of kids to start reading. But it's old hat now. I've seen the Medicine Cat Apprentice. I have seen the Warrior Apprentice. So even though the blurb hasn't lined much up for them, I'm much more interested in what the heck Sunbeam and Flamepaw are up to. What I haven't seen for a good long while is the main character rising to any level of power or significance. I'd love to see, say, Sunbeam become the deputy of Shadow Clan. Sorry, Cloverfoot, you had a good run. Kind of. Actually, Tigerstar II had a good run, too. He started with, like, one less life than everybody anyways. Uh, new Shadow Clan leader time. We need some first dark style succession. Speaking of which, Misty Star. She's on the cover of the book, and this book is called River, and... Ugh, how long have we been joking about how old this cat is? Uh, as far as the overall plot, I have no idea where we're going, but if Misty Star lives through all of it, I'll be aggressively shocked. Actually, here's a short list of things I anticipate overall. Number one, Squirrel Flight and White Wing go to the Elder's Den and Bramble Star picks a new deputy, hopefully not Lion Blaze. I anticipate this happening, even though it's a bit uncomfortable. I don't like the idea of Squirrel Flight retiring because it implies she's unfit for the job when Bramble Star is much, much older than she is. I also don't like the idea of White Wing retiring because both her parents are alive and currently in the Elder's Den. It's awkward. Both of them aren't really that old, but I can't see them not wanting Squirrel Flight out of the way by now, especially seeing as they largely are unwilling to get rid of Bramble Star in general. I'm also kind of seeing the last arc as Squirrel Flight's last hurrah in a few ways. She's just... She's done. Squirrel Flight is done. Number two, Misty Star dies. Yeah, I just think this is going to happen, sorry. I've been thinking this was going to happen since 2016, so, uh, um, hope, <laughs> I don't know. I don't even care at this point, like Misty Star or Reed Whisker. I do not care how alive or dead they are because I really don't care about RiverClan, and hopefully that changes this arc. Three, only half-clan relationships are made lenient in the rest of the Warrior Code, besides maybe the rule about leader's word always being law stays largely the same. I honestly don't think they're going to be uh, going as far as allowing the medicine cats to have mates and kits. I don't think we're getting more lenient about borders, and I, I just I just don't think they're going to change all that much about the warrior code beyond just the relationship thing, the base level relationship thing. Number four, Bristle Frost and Root Spring have some kittens. I, I don't really care for this ship, as you guys know, but I'm pretty sure we've been on this track for ages now. Uh, number five, custody of Bristle Frost and Root Spring's kittens ends up being split between the clans. I'm guessing this is some of the unprecedented changes that will be deliberated on. And here's a short list of things I hope will happen, but probably definitely won't. Uh, number one, Bramble Star dies for real. Uh, this is probably going to be at the top of my hope this will happen list until he dies. Number two, the Medicine Cat relationship laws are done away with and suddenly Medicine Cats are allowed mates. Granted, this would be way more fun if an adult existing Medicine Cat was the protagonist, but this still has tons of potential to me because I actually just want to see how they would react. Like, actually, in fact, let me tell you how I think every Medicine Cat would react. Uh, Jay Feather is probably too set in his ways to even consider anything like this, and it doesn't seem in character for him to pursue a relationship at all, despite him having done it when he was possessing Jay's wing. Uh, he probably thinks strongly that the old rule is right and correct, especially because of the nature of his birth. Alderheart would strongly consider it, but then feels too guilty, especially seeing as his romantic candidate was a kitty pet, and that's wrong and bad anyways. Mothwing would be similar to Jayfeather, I think, but with a touch of she would have done it anyways if she ever actually intended to have one. Kestrel Flight, in my mind, seems most likely to actually go through with it and then have, like, Jayfeather think passive-aggressively about how he's an idiot for it. I just think Jayfeather hating on Kestrel Flight all the time is really funny. Frecklewish strikes me as being married to her work, from what limited we know about Frecklewish, so I don't really see anything changing with her. Additionally, I don't really know who Fidget Flake is as a person. Puddleshine might go for it? I mean, being a medicine cat was never a choice on his part, and the rules getting more lenient might, you know, seem like getting a vacation to him. Meanwhile, Shadow Sight has never so much as had a romantic thought in his life, and I can't imagine him getting any sort of mate. He probably thinks the rule change is positive, though. Granted, I feel like I could be totally wrong on this. <laughs> they could announce that Medicine Cats are allowed to have families, and then Jay Feather immediately stars in a ThunderClan version of The Bachelor. 
but I just really want to see their reactions. Number three is some gay cats for once, and I know this won't happen. I know this won't happen, but, uh, Wings of Fire's been doing it, Warrior Cats. Don't you want to compete with Wings of Fire? Wings of Fire has a TV show coming out. Do you have a TV show coming out, Warrior Cats? I didn't think so. We're going to be shipping Frostpaw and Whistlepaw series anyways, regardless of what you choose to do, Warrior Cats, so you might as well give in. Number four is Frostpaw and Flamepaw do not get together. We're already dealing with the Roots, Root Spring and Bristlefrost ship, and I can't see this as not just being a repeat of that. It probably sounds like I don't like romance in general, but I promise you I do. I just would rather have it be some actual development instead of cats deciding their own love after seeing each other for the third time ever. Half-clan relationships have always been in warrior cats, just constantly, but the problem with half-clan relationships is that the cats need to find time to actually see each other and interact with each other to, to make these relationships make sense, and Rootspring and Bristlefrost didn't even begin to make sense until they had, like, been on an entire journey together. Number five is the conflict stays internal and political. I want in-clan cats who are evil and bad. I want rivalries. I want friendships. I want cliques. I want these cats to know each other and have opinions on each other. I want it to mirror, like, the first arc, where we know what where our main character stands with the other people in the clan. We know how how Fireheart feels separately about Longtail and Darkstripe and Whitestorm, you know? And I'm worried that this kind of angle is already dead. We've got three main characters, we've got three completely separate stories to tell, and I don't know how much of their clans and how much of their interactions we can actually fit in there. There are definitely a few things that we don't know about the current arc and how it's going to end. Like, Squirrelflight could die, Bramblestar could die, Probably not, but things could happen that change the course of this upcoming series politically that we haven't been clued into by the vague blurb. I would love some deputy drama in any clan at all. It feels unfortunate to me that it's at the expense of Squirrel Flight, but, you know, things need to move along. And there are, you know, clear things that they're going to do with Riz Root Spring and Bristlefrost. Uh, obviously, neither of them are going to die horribly. You know what? But what if they did, actually? You know what? Stop, stop, stop right there. What if Rootspring or Bristlefrost died horribly? What if they're changing the code because of some tragic Romeo and Juliet kitty cat stuff? That would be really fun. Uh, not to encourage death or anything, but what I was going for is, um, <laughs> I don't know what they're going to do with Shadow Sight. I don't know where they're going with Shadow Sight at all. I hope that he has something to do in this last book, because if he doesn't, it's going to be really disappointing. He was built up as having this connection to the imposter that nobody else really had. I mean, connection is a strong word, but like, he was negatively influenced and manipulated by Ashfur for the entire arc. It, more so than anybody else here, besides Scrollflight, obviously, more so than any other main point of view character here, Shadow Sight has a score to settle with Ashfur, and I hope he's the one to settle it and not Root Spring. If the last book of this arc is good, it will redeem the whole arc for me. I don't mind that books four and five were slow if there's just some successful, amazing payoff in book six. Uh, I'm not completely betting on it, but I'm hoping for it, because that would... Th that would make everything feel a lot better. I, I feel like we haven't gotten, like, a good book six since... Omen of the Stars, at least. But anyway, there's my thoughts on the new arc. I, uh, I got a lot of people asking me to talk about this, so I have talked about it. See you next time.